to another episode of Binding Roll, where we play 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons in the world of the Ninth Age. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the Ninth Age, please use, a use the link in the description below. That'll take you straight to the official Ninth Age website. It is a uh, rank and flank tabletop wargaming strategy game that I play and love very much, and that this YouTube, YouTube channel is dedicated to. Um, but let's get back to um, the game. As you know, as everyone knows, Rob is now our DM for our short little mid-season. Um, and with that, I'll hand it off to Rob. Go right ahead. All right. Good evening, all. Um, I guess we'll start with uh, intros and what you drink in. Um, we haven't leveled up yet, so we'll skip that. But why don't we go with Erky? Uh, I'm drinking a Lagunas IPNA. Uh, it's still regulated like nor alcohol. I might be able to get drunk more off of a heavy kombucha, but uh, yeah, it's a nice hoppy taste. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, we have Trixie. Oh, you're muted. I think you're muted. Yeah. It's got to be your oh, box. Yes, I am. <laughs> Uh, I'm drinking a, a gin and tonic uh, out of a uh, glass made out of an old Grey Goose bottle. Nice. Classic. You know it. Okay, we have Varicus. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then we have Cleet. Uh, I'm drinking old wedding beer just to get rid of it it's just uh you know goose island kind of standard stuff i got a, like two cases of it after our wedding and i'm just slowly drinking my way through solid all right and then i am drinking we've got the wasatch evolution amber ale it's one of my go-to's Okay, so let's get into it. You guys are, the party is sleeping currently in the Copper Coin Inn in Wilhelmshaven, uh, where you guys ended up after you were shipwrecked last time. You fought some lizard people on a ship, um, first with the help of some sailors, and then after they ran away by yourselves. Uh, did all let's the, did see. all of the sailors go down with the ship? Uh, probably. I don't. I don't think we know that. Tragedy. <laughs> yeah. Well. Those cowards got what they deserved. Right. <laughs> Cowardice is, you know, you get what you deserve. Um, okay. So you ended up in Wilhelmshaven. You talked to a guard who thought you were weird. Um, you went to the Copper Coin Inn to get rooms and drinks and food and all that. You met Johan, the proprietor, um, who also thought you were weird. And yeah, you went to sleep. So we'll pick up from there. Um, who's up first? Who wakes up early? Well, I take a little four-hour nap to get my full rest, so I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm probably the early riser. Okay. Stretch my arms, look around, check the pockets for coins. Your pockets or other people's pockets? All pockets. <laughs> Fair enough. Any and all. Yeah, makes sense. <laughs> Good to know. All right. Uh, well, I guess, does anybody have anything early morning they want to do? Uh, yes, uh, I have reset my infusions uh, as a artificer, and some of the things I can make is the oh, the notes uh, okay the alchemy jug. Wonder maybe I can make a quick buck from the bartender selling an endless supply of booze. Hopefully he doesn't choose the there is a poison option, so I hope he doesn't screw up. Um, 
and a bag of holding. So I'm gonna make one of each. Okay. Alchemy jug and bag of holding. I'm not sure. I didn't see anything in the book about material costs. So. <laughs> we won't worry about that. Okay. You found some stuff lying around behind the tavern, and. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it happened to be exactly what you needed. All right. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm. I actually didn't fall asleep in the room. I I don't feel com I don't feel too comfortable sleeping in uh, man-made buildings. So um, I actually saunter into the main room from the back door. I actually slept uh, kind of underneath a tree outside the back of the of the cavern, or maybe even outside of the whole uh, town. Okay, fair enough probably better rested than you would have been anyway so that's okay uh cleat will notice that um the cat oh, okay, is okay. so so uh, is the cat roaming around like without you or is it uh no it's uh, it's on my shoulder again, i i, I where, attempt where? to to pet the cat without trixie noticing okay give me that <laughs> sweet sweet stealth stealth check <laughs> Pretty cute. Oh, that's a... Oh, that's a... What is that? That's an 11. Uh, an 11? Yeah. Mm. And, uh, I will roll a perception check. Uh, and that's gonna be a 13. Uh, and then I should also roll for the cat. <laughs> now... I would argue that this does involve smell. With Cleet, I think everything involves smell. <laughs> so, so the yeah. cat has advantage. <laughs> uh, so let's see. Um... Well, that uh, would be a 19, and yeah, so 19 for the cat. Um, you, you don't get anywhere near. <laughs> Swing and a miss, Cleet. Well, you see me coming in, what do you do? I'm not stopping. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> Trixie will move out of the way. And there will be a... If you continue to follow her, she will continue to move around the room, avoiding you. Okay, I'm not, like, I'm not, like, visibly following you, but, like, every kind of few seconds, I take a half step closer to you. Maybe another half step closer to you. During, during whatever conversation we have. <laughs> and Trixie will continue to take a half step further away every time you take a half step closer. All right. So you guys are all now, I'm assuming, in like the you know bar room where the tables and all that stuff are. <laughs> uh, you sit down. Uh, Johan notices you from behind the bar. He walks up. He's got plates with eggs and bacon, you know, some sort of fried potato, and he puts them down and says, "Oh, good morning. How uh, how did you all sleep?" Hmm. I slept splendidly. I slept like a spider in its web. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's that's great. In my in my mind, that um, means I've had a good night's sleep. But I don't know about him. Right. <laughs> yeah. I think he gets the analogy. He just finds it creepy. <laughs> so you're understood. Um. Well, would any anybody like anything other than the uh, standard breakfast? Uh, I don't know. I'm famished. Do you have anything more uh, exotic? Exotic? Uh, I don't know about that. Um, usually, when I ask people if they want more than just a standard breakfast, they're too hungover to ask for anything else. So. Uh, Never mind. We don't have anything else. This is this is what you get. Do you want a drink? That we have. 
Well, I enjoy the illusion of choice. Thank right. you. Well, yeah, it was it was there until you ruined it. Um, I... Okay. Well, uh, you mentioned A round, round of drinks for everyone. Okay, I will go get that. Yeah, uh, I'll be right back. Trixie will have water. It is too early to be drinking. Yeah, drinks. yeah. Which I assume is what you yeah, just ordered. Johan's already <laughs> gone. He's going behind the bar, pouring out, you know, getting big mugs of ale, mead, whatever. Uh, he brings them back and he says, So, last night after you were talking the craziness about the lizard people, um, you mentioned or at some point you mentioned needing to get to Cantamont and needing to make some money. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Well, Cantamont, <laughs> yeah. I like it there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, uh, personally, I can't do much for you on that unless you want to, like, wash dishes or something. Um, but the... Uh, there is a friend of mine who I might be able in to introduce you to uh, that might be able to help you. Uh, is that something you'd be interested in? Tell us more. Yes, please. Oh, okay, well, uh, maybe I'll just let you meet him when he gets here. He's usually in pretty early. Uh, so I will be right back. Enjoy your breakfasts. And uh, uh, we will talk later. And he just kind of turns around and walks away. Um, you're enjoying your breakfasts. Will you guys go ahead and make me perception checks? A 15. A 23. Okay. Wow. Uh, All right. It was Erky had a 16. Negative. Uh, uh, Erky had a 3. Oh, okay. My bad. Trixie. All right, Trixie and Cleet, you guys, while you're eating, at one point notice this um, human gentleman walk into the bar. Uh, he's got, look at the picture here. He's got, you know, kind of a shortish white beard, dark hat. He's wearing some armor and has kind of golden or, you know, bronze epaulets over his armor, uh, kind of a purple jacket. Um, it should be on the map there. Okay, yeah. So you guys can see it in roll 20. Yeah. I put it kind of over the map. Um, he walks in twin, and twin sword. sits down at the bar next to a dwarf that's there just kind of drinking. Um, they strike up a conversation. Uh, and you go about continuing to eat. Hmm. Uh, I assume we're sitting at a table. Yeah, what, uh, a table. what seating arrangement is it? Like the four of you guys? Yes. What, what is the I seating mean, arrangement? You tell me. Uh, I sit in, to close to Trixie. I was just about to say. <laughs> that, that's that's what I, that's the main thing I wanted to know. Um, so, uh, throughout the conversation, uh, Trixie has been curling her nose at the rank smell coming from. I'm going to assume the left of her. She's going to turn to Cleet and say, "This just will not do," and uh, cast press the digitation on you to uh, clean you up. The, so it's gonna like just like take the dirt off my clothes. Uh, it cleans you, yeah. Like you <laughs> took a magic wow. shower. I'm imagining Pretty like much. um, like how do you feel about Marty that? McFly in Back to the Future <laughs> Two, where he turns on his drying jacket and just like blows wind in his face. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, it's, that's that's a great. I'm I'm a little like it. startled, but I'm like I'm too focused on the cat, and I want to ask Trixie questions. I'm like I'm like, oh, um, Trixie, uh, your friend the cat. Um, um, how long have you had? The, what's the cat's name? 
And can I pet it? <laughs> Trixie, do you engage? <laughs> <laughs> now that the smell has gone, uh, Trixie's going to turn back to her food. <laughs> um, Trixie? Trixie! And I start <laughs> tapping Trixie in the shoulder. Trixie! 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 <laughs> Trixie just ignores it. That is that oh, strange fellow across the way there. <laughs> what kind of what kind of uh, armor is that that gentleman wearing? I've never seen such a thing. Would a history check potentially offer? Sure. That? Yeah. Why not? Oh, Trixie does not care. That's a nine. That's okay, he's, he's got I rolled a wrong. four plus five. <laughs> I rolled a yeah. nine for a history check. It's got <laughs> armor on. It's certainly armor. Yep. Eleven? It's nice armor. It's yeah, nice armor. It's like okay <laughs> armor. So um, I, I notice everyone kind of looking over at this guy and observing him and talking about his armor, and I'm like, um, do... Do we want to be friends with him? Should I go make friends with him? Oh, yes. Both okay, definitely. I get up and I walk over to uh, this gentleman, and as I'm walking over there, I cast Guidance on myself. Oh, okay. And I walk up and I say, and I walk up to the table with this guy and the dwarf, and I say, Hello, friends. Um, my name is Cleet. Uh, I I uh, I like to I like the the swamp and the jungle and the forest. Do you like the swamp too? And will you be my friend? Okay, they kind of look at each other and then the human says, "Uh are are you okay? Like do you need like do you, do you need money or something?" Mm. Will that get you to go away? No, I don't need money at all, but um, I need friends because I like to talk to people. I like to talk a lot. Um, um, do you like to talk? No. Hmm. Not really. Do you have any pets? Do you, do you have a cat? Do you have a cat? No. Hmm. Does your dwarf friend have a cat? It seems like a lot of people here have cats. And that's new to me, and I like it, though. Uh, he looks at <laughs> A lot of people one is person. one yeah, person. One uh, the human kind of looks at the dwarf, and uh, the dwarf just kind of shrugs, grabs his beer, and then gets up and walks out, walks away. I say bye, bye, uh, bye. At, at this point, Johan walks up, and he says, Oh, so I see who you have already become acquainted with my uh, my new friends here. Um, oh, are you the, the human? Are you the, the person with the with work for us? You can get us to Cantamont, is that right? So this human sitting there looks at Johan, and Johan kind of shrugs and nods his head a little bit. He's like, oh, okay. <laughs> You're those people. That actually makes some more sense now. Um, yes, I I could potentially, if you could help me out with a few things, I could maybe make it worth your while. You know, you know what'll make it worth my while? Your friendship. Friendship. <laughs> yes. Uh, so without without any we'll like like uh, talk about consulting my group, I'm like I'll do anything you'll ask if you'll be my friend. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, what can you do? Like what kind of what makes you think you would be helpful? Oh, um, if you ever need to go in the swamp. Um, I love it there. It's so nice. It's like beautiful in the swamp and I have uh, I have friends in the swamp and um, I like the water in the swamp and I like the trees in the swamp too. Um, 
I'm gonna intervene at this point and be and uh, approach uh, <laughs> the cleat and this new fellow. Be like, um, what cleat's trying to say is he's an excellent warrior and very skilled in the ways of uh, combat with maybe um, unpredictable fighting styles. <laughs> I look at Verik. Oh, I look at Verik. It's okay. like, uh, did I mean that? <laughs> <laughs> it's just lost in translation. Uh. He's also very talented with um, creatures and animals. So if there's anything ever uh, comes your way involving uh, small mammals, uh, you know where to go. <laughs> the guy kind of chuckles and says, okay, well, I'll keep that in mind. Uh, I take it you are one of the group that survived the shipwreck that Yoan told me about? Yes, I'm Varkus. The four of us were uh, seeking passage to these fine lands when we were beset by deadly storm, which um, unfortunately slain the entire crew except for us. We are quite uh, resilient, though, and we will take on your challenge just like we conquered the, uh, the storm and the crash. He looks at Johan and, and kind of asks, Johan had mentioned something about lizard people yeah the lizard people were not that. friendly yes i'm not quite the expert on on this matter perhaps one of my other companions could illustrate yeah. this yeah, we greater were, detail. we were right in the uh, middle of the water on the way to Tentmont, and in the middle of the night uh, we were assaulted by a bunch of skinks and even a Quattro Lord floating on a platform. It was rather shocking. He kind of just okay. sits back, strokes his beard for a moment. Interesting. Um, you know, Johan, I'm thinking that these people might definitely be helpful for my, uh, my purposes, so. Uh, why don't you grab me another drink and I'll talk to them for a little while. Johan says, oh, anything you want, Griffin, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. And then he scuttles off towards behind the bar, you know, looking very pleased with himself. Um, and then the human turns to you and says, I'm Griffin. And I, let's just say I work for some people around here who are invested in keeping the peace and, you know, keeping things relatively quiet around here. Um, and when trouble pops up, usually I'm the one to find somebody to take care of it. So um, does that sound like the kind of thing that you guys are uh, capable of? So if we, do we have to wait for trouble to uh, show up, or do you have already encountered trouble that you need help with? Oh, I mean, I got a list. Uh, if if you want, if you want to start talking about that, we there are a few things that I think maybe you might be right for. Um, kind of. I mean, I can make a walking semi sentient cannon. That that would that would that help? I mean, it doesn't, it's not like a specific solve for any of my problems, but it, it might be part of the solution, certainly. Okay. Um, well, it sounds like you're interested. So let me just kind of go over a couple of the things that uh, are going on around here. He pulls out a little list, you know, uh, says, okay, so let's see. Uh, there's a mining camp up to the north that, uh, has have been having some trouble with bandits for the last week or so. Uh, um, and, you know, thievery and vandalism and things like that. So I've heard uh, they could use some, uh, some assistance with that. There's also up north, he actually pulls out a map to show you kind of where these things are. It looks surprisingly like the map that you guys are looking at here oh, wow. in World 20. <laughs> yes. 
Um, he says, oh, uh, do you like it? I drew this. It's very it's very nice. Uh, I'm pretty proud of it. Um, Quite the cartographer. So the mine is kind of straight north of town here, where that little cave is. There's an encampment there for the miners, and uh, it's kind of a relatively new mine that's up there. Then further north from that, up by Lost Lake, uh, a friend of mine has been hearing talk about strange music that's been playing at night and campfires on the side of the lake where there normally aren't anything like that. Uh, and then the last one that I have for you potentially is up to the northeast along the Imperial Highway there. Uh, these standing stones have been rising up out of the ground um, for the last maybe two weeks. Uh, progressively, they just started, you know, breaching the ground, and now one of them is like 15 feet tall. Uh, that was certainly pretty weird. So we've gotten a lot of questions about that one. Any of these sound to your liking? Hmm. I'm intrigued by these stones. Yes. Uh, I like stones too. Let's go see the stones. Okay. Uh, is that a, so, is that a unanimous sure. choice from the group? So well, what counts as mission success? Because it's pretty... What's our success criteria? <laughs> that's a really great question and that's the kind of you know drive that I appreciate from people that I hire so uh, let's just say if you come back alive from investigating this with some sort of information um, let's say there's 20 gold in it for you um, this will be sort of a it, trial to see if you're really capable. Is that enough to get us passage to Cantamon? No. No. What do you know of the ways to get to Cantamon? Uh, I mean, there's not really an easy way to get there. The straightest way, obviously, as you can see on my lovely map, uh, is would be through the barrier swamp, but in recent months, the monsters in the barrier swamp have gotten much, much more violent and numerous, um, to say the least. I know your buddy here says he's a, a big fan of the swamp, but kind of looks you guys all up and down and says, I'm not sure if you guys would do very well there at the moment. <laughs> Um, but I can say that if you take care of a few things for me, you will both have enough gold to get your way to Cantamont, and maybe I can, uh, talk to a friend and see if we can get a boat sent this way, or to make a convenient stop between Cantamont and some other port. Well, it seems these three missions are all sort of in the same direction. Um, you don't necessarily need to choose only one. That's right? very like, true. Yeah, the mine is on the way. So, I mean, uh, you could always do one and then come back to me. We could talk and, you know, I could see if you survived. But sure, I mean, we have yeah, to, take care of them all. We have, Great. we have to pass through the bandits to get to the stone. So we kind of need to take care of the bandits before we can even approach that mission, unless we're just going to try to, like, ninja by them. <laughs> well, one thing I can say is that the bandit activity has pretty much only been at night, um, and not so much on the path. If you wanted to make your way to Lost Lake, I bet you could make it there without having any bandit problems, you know, unless you're really unlucky. And the, the stones, they're, they're just to the uh, east of Lost Lake. I think the, the stones oh. are here, right? Yeah. This is the stone. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. This Got is it. the Imperial Highway, as he called it. Uh, I see. And then. Yeah. So they're just kind of right off the road. Yeah. All right. Start off with the stones. That makes a lot more sense. All right. Good, because I've been really curious about that. That's a weird thing. That probably like shouldn't happen. But you know. What does the cat think? Yes, what does the cat think? Does the cat get a vote <laughs> in your group? <laughs> Griffin says. He's very curious. The, the cat meows. Uh oh. Opalescence meows. No, none of you have actually been informed of. So the cat, the cat meows. Although you may have overheard. And I, I go. Is that I an go, affirmative meow? Or the cat meows, and I nod, being like, "Oh, I understand." The cat. Of course, of course. The cat wants us to go through the swamp. Oh, that's great. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna try to speak Trix, with small. Trixie's beasts. gonna look at you and and <laughs> and say, and, and, and just like in a are you an idiot kind of like but that, that's the that's the facial expression Trixie is giving you right now <laughs> roll me insight to find out if, if Cleet's an idiot <laughs> um, important role well I can already tell you I know what the cat's thinking we have a telepathic link right oh the cat probably thinks that yeah for sure yeah well, and so Trixie is mirroring that in that Trixie thinks is an idiot. With that, I, 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 I take enough. some of the, the eggs from the table and I kind of hold it up to the cat like this. Ooh. Roll persuasion. There we go. No. Does it eat? I don't know. No. Okay. Well, sorry. Wait. It's it's a face spirit. Well, I rolled a 19. It's got to be hungry. <laughs> like, it's got to be tempting, right? Uh, not really. It's a face spirit. It doesn't need to eat. <laughs> well, you tried. Yeah. The, uh, the, the squirrel was, uh, was, was, uh, was, was Trixie being a dick. I am. And it's still full from that. I go... Well, I mean, potentially. I say, all right, all just more eggs for me. And I take a bite of the egg. I'm like, mmm, it's so good. Mmm. <laughs> oh, Pleasance is paying you no mind. Not buying it. <laughs> Doesn't even care. Okay, well, this is all going on. Griffin's kind of just watching you guys in your interaction. Like, oh, okay, so is that like a, is that like a yes? You're going to the stones? Yes, I'll help you. Yeah. We'll get to the stones. Okay. Well, he gives you this map. And cool. <laughs> points at where the stones are for one last little clarification. To make mm -hmm. sure confirmation. And yep. says, all right, well, you know, good luck. Let me know. Let me know what happens. <laughs> And when we come back, you'll be here in the tavern? Oh, yeah. I'm around. You know, if if I'm not, you know, talk to Johan. He can, he can get a message to me. So, but I'll probably be around. All right. Well, I'm curious about your amulet there. <laughs> oh, the bring lovely up. flame inscription. <laughs> Specific things from a general drawing. Let's uh, pull that back up. <laughs> <laughs> Never put anything in the drawing that you don't want somebody to ask about. Well, this is an, a, a, a drawing I adapted from something else, but it's all good. Oh, he says, oh, this thing? And he picks up uh, his little amulet that has just kind of a fire, um, little fire symbol on it. And he says, uh, oh, I, I got it a long time ago. Don't. Don't worry about that. All right, fair enough. Okay. Maybe you succeed on this mission. You can uh, come back. We'll have a drink, and I'll tell you a little more about that then. Sounds good. Ooh. No, 
know he's very mysterious. Prom yeah. Promises of knowledge if we if we successfully complete the mission. That was more promises of a story, but Oh. Well, but all right, let's you never know. With that, our, our, our I, um, story's I not stand knowledge. up and I say, um, well, if we can't go to the swamp, so let's at least go see these stones. Maybe they'll be cool. Not cool. Super cool. Not cool. Cool is a bad word. Uh, it, maybe they'll be. Maybe they'll be friends there. Forest friends. Cool is uh, a goblin term. <laughs> yeah. That translates to interesting. Yes. But nobody else speaks. Goblin, of course, so that's fine. that's a goblin uh, common slang. <laughs> of course, yeah. All right. Yep. So I believe it. You guys are uh... well. Before Griffin leaves, he says, "You know what? I know. I understand from talking to Johan that you guys don't have a ton of stuff. So let me uh, let me help you out a little bit." And he hands you each a. What is the healing potion? Like the low one? Is potion it just minor? Healing. All right. Uh, is it a regular potion of healing? Good. Yeah. I sure. Think, why yeah. not? Um, just regular old potion of healing. I think there's a, a weaker one, but it'll give you the regulars. Oh. Okay. Uh, like... Potion of healing is the uh, smallest one. So okay. Potion right. of healing, potion of healing greater, potion of healing superior. And potion of healing. Super, super in. All right. Then he hands you yeah. each a regular potion of healing. Okie dokie. Erky puts hers in her fancy new bag of holding. Indeed. What else is in there? Ah. Uh, I have a everything else. Oh, there's a bunch of shit in my backpack that really, like, ball bearings and rations and torches and hammers and grappling hooks and all these things that are really bad for the back <laughs> uh, uh, this, this little gnome so yeah I'll eventually migrate all, all that heavy crap over I was thinking snacks but that's fine snacks I mean yeah. honey and mayonnaise is a snack right uh I mean, I was... no. I, I, I <laughs> but... would. Yeah, honey, honey's a All snack. Right. I, was... I, don't know about I, I, I would say honey is a snack. We can debate that on the uh, on the way. All right. <laughs> so you guys get all your stuff together and make your way northeast along the. Well, I guess I should say, which way do you want to go? Do you want to take the road or do you want to take this path that leads you sort of towards the mine and the uh, lost lake and bandit stuff bandit things uh, yeah let's take the main road Propose, yeah main road 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 okay all right so you guys are walking your way along the road it's only maybe a, a an hour walk or something like that a couple of hours and you are walking along the road do 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 there's kind of low hills on either side uh, oh. kind of rolling hills and uh why don't you each make me perception checks so 14 for me a nine 14 for cleat nine for erky barricus gets an 18 16 Okay. Cleet, what was yours? Uh, 14. 14, okay. So basically everybody except for Erky. Uh, you kind of hear both uh, to the north of the road, you hear kind of music, but also shouting, like kind of angry shouting. But at the same time, it, it's also melodic in a weird way. Um, and who was it? Varicus had the 19? 18. 18. All right. Varicus, you look to the left and then you see just the top of a very large, what must be a very large stone, 
poking up over one of the hills um, that is just kind of to the left, to the north of the road. Mm. Uh, I'd like to uh, kind of stealth to the top of the hill to, towards the, the sound of angry voices, but keep myself myself concealed. Okay. Make me a stealth check. Stealth Ooh, yeah. that's, a, that's a one. That's a crit. Crit fail. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> so Cleet kind of <laughs> army crawls up the hill. Um... And then sees somebody on the other side, and then just stands up <laughs> and waves and, <laughs> and waves at him. Uh, <laughs> so, Cleet, what you see when you step over the top of this hill, kind of crest the top of this hill, is you see. Actually, we through the magic of roll twenty, we've even got a. Uh, a map for this okay so you see kind of this open field um, with kind of low hills all around it just kind of a little hollow with six small standing stones in a circle and then a large one in the center of it Mm -hmm. and so you're kind of down here looking so leaning up against this stone you see a halfling he is dressed in black he is is sitting there kind of crisscross applesauce and playing a mandolin and looking down at this little box that has some like shiny lights on the top of it and he's playing and sort of shouting into the box and you hear you're a mystery to me my nippon girl um i am extremely fascinated by the music and also the lights from the box and evidently i've I've exposed myself so i just like not aggressively, but just steadily walk down, sit on the other stone in front of him, <laughs> and kind of put my put my head in my hands and go like this, like, hmm. I'm sorry. The idea of feet aggressively exposing myself. <laughs> <laughs> it would probably happen. He has no no social skills. No <laughs> social skills. <laughs> so. Yeah. Just give it time. The wording there was just too perfect. much to pass by. Yeah, you can't let them go. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> so uh, this half link is kind of stops playing and just kind of looks at Cleet. Oh, please keep playing. I love your music. Uh. Uh. Okay. Um. Who, who the hell are you? Oh, uh, hi. My name's Cleet, and I'm here with my... And I look back, and I don't see the three of them. <laughs> I, I, evidently, no one else has gone over the hill with me. With my three friends. But yeah, we heard your music, and we're here to see the stones. Uh, okay, well, um, I'm just, like, trying to play play some music and, like... It's not really a performance. Like I'm trying to capture this song into this little magic contraption here. So I don't really have time for distractions. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll I'll be quiet. Don't worry, I won't make a sound. Okay. Uh, I mean, could you at least like stand out of my eye line? So I can do this. Uh, question: How, how, like the the lesser stones? How big are they? Uh, there may be. They vary in size, but the tallest ones may be five feet tall. All right. So I, I get up and I go. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no problem. I don't want to disturb your music. And I walk behind the stone, and I just kind of peek over the stone and watch him. 
<laughs> okay, so actually, my bad. Were you, did you touch one of the stones before? Yeah, I sat on the stone oh. that's opposite him. Uh -oh. oh. Okay, my bad. So as soon as you touch the stone, you hear this. And the, the halfling kind of perks up and he's like, oh, you know what? Maybe you can help me. You said you had some friends around. Do you think they would maybe help too? I say, of course, anything for a friend. And I turn and I yell, I go, <laughs> friends and cat, come on over. <laughs> People are friends to Cleveland until proven otherwise. <laughs> Great. Uh, pale goblin, bring bring your cat. What are you guys How doing? How far was it to Cantamon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're going question. the wrong way. <laughs> we can probably make a good distance before he notices. All right, we'll climb up the hill and see what the hell's going on. Clearly, we're not doing the. Uh, I mean, do we really want to do that? We now have two separate campaigns. It's the Adventures of Cleet. And the adventures of the abandoned crew <laughs> or abandoning crew. Cleat and not Cleat. All right, so you go over the hill. Uh, what were you saying, Ricky? Yeah, well, since we're not doing something, it's like go on a hill and see like what the fuss is all about. Because I was expecting Cleat to sneak back and brief us, but well, we've just been invited over. So. He blew it. And it of course, we could have done this easily, but he ran off before I could interject. Perfect. I, I, this might, you know, it's. I mean, you, as to you be three expected, have to teach but, me the ways of you know. of society. And... Yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> That'll be a nice sub. -theme. All right. So you guys come over the hill, and you see the halfling kind of like do a little jump up and down, and he's like, "Oh, awesome! There's enough of us. Uh, I think this should be good." Um, so he says to each of you, um, he like grabs Cleet and, and kind of points him towards the, the stone that he was already at. And he, he runs over to Erky and kind of grabs her hand and, and moves her over towards this stone I'm, I'm right gonna here. I'm going to fight back. This is like, I'm going to pull a knife. Like, hey, hands off, buddy. Oh, uh, my bad. I mean, I like the energy, but uh, sorry. Maybe I got a little excited. Uh, maybe I should explain what we're doing here. That would be appreciated. Okay, sorry. I get a little excited sometimes, um, especially when it comes to my music. So I'm sure you understand. So so my name's Joey. Uh, they, they call me Joey Cape, and he kind of flourishes his cape. He's got a black cape on. He's wearing all black. Uh, but so I'm one of, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a big deal in certain circles. I'm one of, in one of the greatest punk rock bar troops <laughs> that you will ever hear. Uh, maybe you've heard of us. We're called Bad Religion Check. <laughs> kind of looks at all of you. Oh, I love it. That's fantastic. Nobody Just wait, I got a bunch of them. So why don't you all roll, uh, or anybody who would like to want to insight check this guy? Sure, I'll insight him. I'm certainly confrontational, not on the uh, start off on the right foot. Uh, 15. Uh, 22. Please, oh, damn. Please believe thinks it's the best in everybody yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm like that band right. sounds great that band sounds real cool i don't know if you know what cool means but it means a good thing so erky trixie and Barricus, you've never heard of this band but he certainly seems confident in his musical ability and their reputation you know maybe it's just not your cup of tea yeah so but who knows? That, that, too old that's for that. great. What's uh, honored to uh, be able to listen to your music. 
What can you tell us about these stones? And why why do you want to move us over there? Oh, okay. So I am trying to record a song into this little device here. And he points to this kind of ornately carved wooden box. Uh, but it has four stones on top of it. Three of them, they're kind of arranged in a two by two pattern, you know, two by two. Uh, they, four of, uh, three of them are red and, I'm sorry, three of them are green and one of them is red. Um, and he points at it and he says like, this is this magic item that I got that uh, I can sing and play into and it will record the sound and like magically capture it. But like I can record, he, he hits a button and it starts playing this like very angry shouting music, um, shouting over like mandolins and lutes and stuff <laughs> like that. I start, I start uh, bobbing my head to music. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Some pan pipes and like a little hand drum in the back. Um, but He's like, oh, that's that's one of our our great songs. It's called uh, "Fuck Armageddon." This is the Nine Hells. I think you'd really like it. But but anyways, um, so I'm trying to capture some particular sounds, like the one that you just made. Uh, what was your name again? Me. He motions to Cleet. My name's Cleet. You might have actually. My said. name's Cleet Engelbert. Okay. Well, hello, Cleet Engelbert. Uh, he he says, you know, I'm trying to capture some of these sounds like your friend Cleet here made. Um, but he walks over to like this stone and he touches it and you hear a and then he walks over to this one and you hear a and then he, you know, walks over to the other ones and you hear some other sounds. Um, what happens when you touch so that big like, metal one? He walks up to it and touches it, and nothing happens. Hmm. So, what I need you guys to do is to kind of stand by each one of these stones, and I'm going to put the sound capturing magic device in the middle, and I'm going to kind of cue you guys to hit the stones in a particular pattern and we're going to record it i love it what do you guys think i i run i run over to I, my I stone i like this guy he's in. i love running to my stone and start hitting it like tapping it multiple times i'm skeptical <laughs> dude like a... trixie will not play second fiddle in somebody else's performance i respect oh. that i respect that right. um seems like, like... Is there any she, she's, she says Red. as she's like 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 uh, uh, smoothing out her own cape, like, like a producer credit or something, maybe. Uh, Vocals. I mean, I can get your names and like put them in the liner notes or whatever. Trixie's just not having it. No. What about no. The cat? Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Does Vericus say that out loud? What about the cat? Have you ever recorded a cat before? Joey kind of just looks at Trixie. Huh? Maybe? <laughs> Is the cat willing to help? I guess not. Opalescence only does what Trixie wishes. What? How did... What do you, how okay. did these stones get here? That's rather odd. Just oh! Like, how do you... Right. I guess I guess that's kind of for some people that's the uh, that's the the spectacle here. Uh, so for the last like couple weeks, they've just been kind of rising up out of the ground, and I was on my way from performing uh, an acoustic solo set in Wilhelmshaven and just kind of wandered out here to take a nap and saw these stones and I started touching them and they started making crazy sounds so I've been here basically for for like two weeks since then oh 
Do we just try to capture the sounds? Yeah, and uh, trying to do. use them as inspiration to write some new songs. Can I make an arcana check on the uh, stones? Find out if they are in fact magical in some way. Sure. Obviously, if anybody had detect magic, I have, wink, wink. Yeah, I, I, that, I, I, uh, no, they like, could do this much easier, that but they're not that they're magic. You touch them in like. <laughs> I mean, like, okay, they're well, making but weird sounds. Like, tell me anything else about uh, it. Is that a thirteen? <laughs> I probably have well, no idea so what kind detect... of magic it is. So. <laughs> so it would be. Arcana would tell us if they are magical. Detect magic would actually tell right, you the, the type, type of, of magic. magic that it is. All right. Told me that. Um, I only got a. I only got a thirteen. Okay. They're magical. I'm in. Okay. doubt. <laughs> yeah. But confirmed. He's not playing yeah. some sort of That's... trick on you with it. Apparently. It could be. You know, it, it, Trixie is no stranger to. Uh, uh, performers wiles and now we know these are the real deal indeed Trixie still isn't going to touch him okay uh, so <laughs> uh, are you guys in like yes yes record me Let's record change. me alright so you have to actually like be quiet like you can't say anything when we're recording you can only touch the stone is that are we going to be able to do that? I, I don't say anything, but I'm, I'm not my head with big, big white eyes. I'm like, hmm. Okay. Perfect. All right. So it's Erky and Barracus and Cleet uh, are in. Get out full, but I'm yeah. taking this one right here. I'll, I'll give it a go. Because he seems rather harmless. <laughs> okay. All right, so he's like, awesome. So he kind of twirls around and runs over to one of the other stones. So let's say, yeah, Varicus, you're going to be on this one. Erky, you're going to be here. And Cleet, you're going to be on the one that you hit before. And he's like, all right, I'm going to be over here. Uh, so Cleet, on your way... Uh, you're kind of standing there. Um, actually, never mind. Erky, make me a dex check. Uh, I think it's a normal dex check. Plus three. Sixteen. As you trip. Okay, you catch yourself fine. <laughs> uh, Trixie, what are you doing while this is all going on? Just observing. Okay, fair enough. So, so what, what did I avoid tripping on? You just, you trip, you like kind of stubbed your toe on the ground, like right here. And you just oh. kind of, you caught yourself. Yeah, you're good. Good. Yeah. Oh, low center of gravity. A little bit easier. Okay. So Joey is just kind of like running around this central stone, uh, getting you guys in place. Um, just kind of like jumping off the angles of it he's like super excited kicks off of it clicks his heels he's like all right this is gonna be great so all right when i point at each of you uh you're gonna you're gonna make the sound you touch the stone and just hit it one time for each time i point at you um all right so each of you make me performance checks to see how your timing is Ooh, 21. Vericus <laughs> rolled a zero. That's, that's harsh. Nice. That's impressive. Very impressive. Um, this would have been perfect for Trixie, cool. but... That one minus one. All right. Brilliant. So you guys, he, he plays the music. He kind of points at you in turn. Uh, Vericus, you are so late after when he points you he he just stops the recording he's like oh come on like it's you just touch the rock when i point at you like 
It's not that difficult. You waited like 10 seconds. But you didn't say when. I said to touch the rock when I point at you. Uh, I did. God. Oh, <laughs> smart. <laughs> All right. He looks at Trixie. He's like, maybe you seem like the kind of person who knows their way around a stage and a performance. You want to get in on this? Are you sure? Maybe re replace No Rhythm McGee over here. <laughs> Trixie does her own performances and only her own performances. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's probably best given that kind of an attitude. So, all right. You do you. That's fine. <laughs> all right. We're going to try this one more time. And then he pushes the little glowing stone on the top of his little box that makes it play the music. In the proper times, he points at all of you guys. Uh, why don't you make me one more performance check? I can do better. So can I. I sure hope so. All right. I rolled a nine. All right, you're a little off, but it's, I mean, it, it's punk. It's not rocket <laughs> science. It doesn't have to be that precise. <laughs> All right, cool. That was great. Um, I think that that is going to be good enough for me to keep. Now I just have to come up with a name for this one. Let's see. Any suggestions? I'm like, I'm like jumping up and down, like raising my hand, still not talking. He looks at yep. you, kind of processes that, and then starts looking at Barracus and Erky. Uh, Queets Ballad. Ooh, eh, maybe we'll we'll put it on the list. It's that's right next to Cantamont is burning, and boot stamping on a halfling face forever. Harsh. <laughs> well, you know, like life is harsh. So, um, so here's one other thing that I wanted to try. So there's this stone over here. I'm sorry. Would any of you guys be willing to touch the big stone in the middle and see if maybe that will make a noise for you guys or like somebody magic, like hit it with a spell or something? I can uh, send a little firebolt its way. Yep. Yeah. Upon hearing that, Trixie backs up <laughs> by like 30 Perfect. feet. <laughs> Just say when. We can even put tokens out here, I suppose. <laughs> um, okay, uh, here, just try it. We'll see what happens. All right, I, uh, I cast my firebolt into the center of the stone after a 10 second delay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's... <laughs> Nice. Not, not great with the rhythm and cues. That's fine. All right. Uh, are these still controlled by you guys? When you, if you copy paste them from the other sheet, then gotcha. it'll maintain the controls. And which one were you guys on? That's an interesting question. Still probably on the boat. Yeah, probably the boat. One thing I'm considering is uh, I can make some stuff while tinkering, so I can actually like record an image or sounds, and I can bring back like tangible proof to our to our uh, uh, sponsor. Curious to uh, there we go. that. So, Brought your grease along. I do have that too. Didn't say how long it takes to uh, set. Capture a visual picture and one of these objects. Hey, you were like this. I just put All the right. boom tube in the corner because 
We don't need that, but I want to carry it for whenever we move maps. Okay, so sure. Varicus smacks this middle stone with uh, a firebolt, and it starts ringing like a tuning fork. That's the word I was looking for. But it is so loud and extremely high-pitched that everybody except for the very cautious Trixie uh, go ahead and make me constitution saving throws. And Joey will make one as well. Uh, oh no. Did I really not bring my dice in here? What an idiot. <laughs> well, you can, you can roll yeah, it I got on D&D uh, Beyond. Okay. D &D Beyond or on uh, roll 20. I think as a DM you can actually roll on D&D &D Beyond in the campaign and it will only show up for you. Did you guys uh, just see that roll? No. No. Okay, no. perfect. All right. So, uh, Varicus, what did you get? A seven. Okay, Cleet. Seven, uh, 16. And Erky? Also 16. Okay. So, Varicus, you are knocked prone. And... I mean, I don't know what the the proper thing for this is, but let's you're stunned for the moment. Uh, Erky and Cleet, you are able to get your hands over your ears quick enough to kind of block enough of it out, but this stone is just ringing. Um, and Joey. Oh, it's just it's it's just keeps on going. Yeah, it it there's fantastic sustain on this thing. <laughs> oh. Uh, and Joey is right here. I think I'm a fake token for Joey. Well, like a tuning fork, I'm wondering if I can dampen it. So I'm going to go over and try to put my, my foot against the uh, this big tower of rock and see if I can, you know, tamp down the vibration so it stops ringing. It seems like maybe it's slowing. Um, okay. Joey sees you do the same thing. Uh, Joey sees you do that, and that it's kind of slowing. He also comes up and tries to like kind of hug it and like dampen some of it, but it's really only just slowing. It's still okay. ringing quite loud and not slowing anywhere near fast enough for your comfort. Um, I want to slowly move forward. Um, until I'm within 30 feet of the big stone. Uh, which I think is... Like right here. Uh, 5, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, Interesting. Okay. Uh, and I'm is going there to like a limit of on the it. target size you could use that on, or can Trixie at level there three is just not. like shrink a castle is down not. to nothing? Uh, so for a castle, it would be an it, it, because it's made of stone blocks. It would only be one block in the castle, but because this is a solid okay. rock, it would reduce the rock. That makes sense. Yep. Okay. Um, so the target size is halved in all dimensions and its weight is reduced to one eighth of normal. Okay. As this big stone kind of shrinks down, the sound gets even higher pitched. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's half size uh, in all dimensions? Yes, half size. Okay. So in all dimensions. The, it's like the same note, but like an octave higher. And okay. Even, even more uncomfortable. Uh, so, <laughs> as that happens, uh, Joey, well, yeah, Erky, as, as and I Klee make me another Constitution so, saving throw. So, so uh, hold on. as I realize yeah. that it's not having the intended effect. Because this is a concentration spell, I can immediately stop concentrating on it, and it will return to its normal size. Okay, fair enough. 
you stop shrinking it and it grows back to its normal size. Um, Joey kind of gives you an angry look um, as he's still like hugging this giant stone trying to dampen it. Uh, Varicus, make me a stun. Would that be constitution? Constitution, David? Uh, yeah. Make me a constitution. Can we just like go up, to, go up and kick him in the stomach? Is that helping? Oh, yeah. like, you're, wait, you're good. Him? You're back. You're back up. Okay. All right. He's good. He rolled a 21 on his constitution. All right. So. All right. He's back up, covering his ears, just kind of shaking the the ringing out of his head. All right, I'm going to start walking uh, over to a Trixie, get out of the, away from the very loud stone. Um, okay, I cast Shillelagh on my club, so it's magical attacks, and I take it and I hit the stone that I'm next to. The small blood with that? Yeah. <laughs> it makes the same... <laughs> sound that you had before <sighs> joey's still right here and he's like it was working i think more of us just need to try and dampen it like if we could maybe like get a circle going around it uh, i i, I can't hear you <laughs> i go up to the stone and <laughs> what? i hit the big stone with my shillelagh God. <laughs> okay so it it stops ringing and it kind of starts to glow with this kind of blue glow and do, 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 do. oh that's not good yeah probably not backing up again <laughs> as, as 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 i see uh as i see it begin to glow I am. I, I've had enough of this. I'm backing I'm back falling up. back next to uh, Trixie. Like, all right. <laughs> okay, so how much? How, how, how much? How much time do we have? So what? I mean, do we, do we have one action? Well, I guess it. It would basically. Be all right, I'll give you one movement if action. you want to start bouncing out of here. Oh no, that wasn't the. Uh, so, um, I was gonna rope trick. And then climb up the rope. Fair enough. You you can cast your rope trick, but as that's happening, uh, so the kind of front face of this stone is is the one that's glowing the brightest, hmm. and then you see this kind of vertical slit form right up the middle, kind of like a a door opening when there's light on the other side. Oh, no. And it kind of opens up, and you see coming out of it is a. I don't actually have a token for this, so my apologies. But a very large. Uh, so it's it's like a spectral being. So it's just kind of made up of this blue glowing light. And it comes out of here, and it has, you can kind of make out features of it. And it has these kind of like armor plates on its head and spikes coming out the side. And those plates go down its back. It's kind of four-footed. And I'm not describing this well at all. But <laughs> so it's a, a kind of low four, four-legged creature with armor plates on its head and back and then a tail with what appears to be a very large club on the end Goodness. of this. Right, and I'm, this is a spectral creature. I'm bringing up the uh, Eldritch Cannon. Okay. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and roll initiative. Like an Hylosaurus or whatever they're called. Oh, like a, like a Thyroskewis. Dinosaur? 30, 20. Something like that. Uh, I rolled 16. 18. Okay, so that's a perky head <laughs> turn. <laughs> very nice. Whoever did that. It's very helpful. Just like this, right? Yeah, I mean, just like that. 
the smile <laughs> and everything. <laughs> All right, Trixie, what did you get? 18. And this extra Erky. Uh, Barracus. Oh, a nine. And Cleet. Uh, 16. Second, where did Joey go? Vericus, that looks like a looks like a Pokemon. Cleet will love it. It does. It's lovely. Should send it to Nintendo. I'm sure they still need ideas for that. <laughs> There's like seven million of them now, so I'm sure they're run out of, running out of good ones. Some of them are literal garbage. <laughs> All right, and then like animate Joey bags of garbage gets a fort. <laughs> Trash type. Cleet, what did you get again? Poison type, but didn't you know. save what I wrote in. Who are you asking? Cleet, what did you get? Uh, 16. Yeah, you have to hit enter for okay. it to save. Yeah. yeah. I keep forgetting that. All right, so do do do. Here, no, that's not right. All right, Erky got twenty. In order. What's that? Erky got twenty. Oh, my bad. You didn't even put me on the list. What was that? <laughs> and then the monster. <laughs> we just know you're first. Yeah. Do do do. Where did it go? Have yeah, it's pretty angry. Oh, okay. Why are you supposed to be good with creatures? You just pissed it off. Nice <laughs> job, tree hugger. <laughs> okay, so the creature gets a three. So it just goes after all of you guys. Okay, Erky, what would you like to do? All right, as my action, I am future. bringing out my Eldritch Cannon, the um, Force Ballista, and as a bonus action, I will activate it to shoot at the beast. The old boom tube. Okay. Yeah, so, um, uh, six, uh, Range attack. Uh, uh, Intel. Ooh, only 13. That is a miss. Uh, okay, that's my turn. Okay. That brings us to Trixie. Okay. This thing uh, is you just said like, I could like cast my rope. raging. And, you, 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 yeah. You said I got to cast my rope trick, yes. right? All right, I'm going to climb up the rope. Uh, so that's going to use my Seems movement. Reasonable. Now, okay. Tell me if you'll allow me to do this. So it specifically says that uh, spells, attacks, and spells can't cross through the entrance. However, if I lean out of it, can I go ahead and cast a spell? You can cast the spell before you make the last jump up into it, and then you'll be up there after your turn. I'll let okay. you make that other step into it afterwards. Okay, that's that's reasonable. Uh, just so, see the hand wait. sticking out of the portal, just like it's like minimal. I mean, there is precedent <laughs> for it, but I'll I'll leave it up to the. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it up to. The, the, you guys already have uh, enough ways to uh, <laughs> railroad me here. I think yeah. I don't think we need to make this any Where's easier. This guy. That, I'm sure that affects his armor class. <laughs> All right. Um, so actually, here we're gonna, we're gonna position this a little bit better. That area is now greased. Okay. Fair enough. So I will need a, a DC 15 Dex saving throw, 
or the creature falls prone. Okay. And digital dice. It's a 20. Okay. Apparently it's a very <laughs> dexterous hulking beast. Or it just rolled like oh. a champion. <laughs> <laughs> right. Who knows? But the area is still greased. Fair enough. Okay, that and is, it... is that your turn? Yeah, that'll be that'll end my turn. Okay. So I'm now in my rope trick. Gotcha. Cleat. Uh, so am I engaged with it right now? I'm right next to it. If I try to move away, will I will it get an attack of opportunity? No. Let's say you could have made it to like over here as it was coming out, and so you can. I am gonna. I'm gonna. I said you guys could make like up to a move, yeah. so you can make a move without being. Engaged. I'm gonna move behind Varicus, and then I'm gonna cast Melf's Acid Arrow uh, at level two at the monster, which I need to roll to hit. Okay. Ooh, that's only a ten. That's a miss. Oh boy. That was a waste of a level two. Yeah, I had to hit him. Okay, so that's my turn. Okay, that brings us to Joey's turn. Actually, does he have. Okay. All right, he's going to cast Dissonant Whispers against this thing. And that that seems appropriate for a punk rocker, right. yeah. <laughs> uh, and it succeeds. So, bonus actions. But after that, he he points at Varicus and says, "Kick its fucking ass!" And gives you bardic inspiration, which is one d six to ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. Nice. All right. I'm inspired by his words. And I run to the creature's ass and attack. Oh. <laughs> well, no, no, that's a drawing. So I think the, it's the blue circle. circle. Yeah, the, the creature circle. is still the, the, the like, bright right. blue circle there. Yeah, yeah down, down here. The ass. He's playing his own, sorry, he's making his own creatures, and then on the map. Oh, we'll go fight this <laughs> <bit. laughs> instead. I, I cast Minor Illusion. <laughs> And then I attack it. <laughs> I'm gonna... Yeah. Yep. I'm gonna... Whoops. Uh, add the d6 to my attack roll since I... Probably didn't hit. I got a 14. Oh, that misses. Alright. So much for that. I'm like a pretty heavily armored dude. He is a bit. He's a, he's a tanky boy. All right, so that brings us to back up to Erky. All right. Wait, the creature doesn't what? go? Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the creature doesn't have to go. All right. It doesn't have to go. No, but it's going yeah, to. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to. It is going to swing at Joey since he was right in front of him. Ooh. I mean, like, break skin and Joey goes into it. Rage. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, yeah. Definitely hits and do do do. Oh. Oh, he does 12 bludgeoning damage. Alright. To Yosef over here. Hmm half his health. Cool, Jesus. That's, uh, that looks like it's coming in 
as uh, as Turkey spells. What? Oh, that's my um, bad. I'm uh, looking at your character sheet while I'm rolling. that before so brilliantly i think just the campaign sh the campaign sheet yeah all right i'm good i'll just do it on <laughs> joey's sheet okay is that the end of the creature's yes, turn yes it is right. i will right, have another good. dc 15 deck saving throw please oh yeah he's still in the grease isn't he He's still in the grease. Uh, actually, we just skipped oh, yeah. Erky. Because <laughs> I cycled forward again. So, Erky, it is your turn now. Okay. Oh, well, oh, but yeah. we need that at the end. No, no, at the no, end no. Of we, its that turn happens first. at the end of its turn. It happens. The, the, the deck saving throw happens. My bad. Oh, so does he have, like, a disadvantage on deck saving throws? Uh, yes. Well, it doesn't matter. It rolled a two. So, it is no, now prone. A, no. Really? The creature is now prone. Yeah. Does, I mean, how does that work on like a magical creature? It it's knocked prone. It knocked it. It's knocked prone. <laughs> Carry on. Okay. All right. So uh, my turn for my action, I'm gonna cast Fairy Fire on it. So it's gonna become much easier to hit. Uh, so basically, uh, each object gets 20 foot cube within range of outline blue and green. Uh, so you get to roll a deck saving throw. I think you need to do that at disadvantage. And uh, for duration, so it's concentration up to a minute, uh, any attack roll against that creature or object has advantage. It's a 12. Uh, it's against a uh, 14. Okay. So, so it fails. So. And it has cool. fairy fire. All right, so as a fairy fire, let's start the count. Uh, one round, bonus action. Gonna activate the uh, force ballista, plus six to hit. Uh, Thirteen with advantage. Uh, roll. Oh, actually, it's gonna that that's that's it's gonna be flat thirteen, because it's prone, what? and you're making a ranged attack. <laughs> oh, fuck. God damn it. So that actually right, makes yeah, it harder to yeah, hit? For, for ranged attack. Makes well, sense, yeah. it makes it harder to hit with well, ranged no, it should, attack. It should, it should cancel out. It, cancel it cancels out. out because you, right, it's, so it's uh, just yeah, a, of the fairy a regular fire. roll, flat roll. Yeah, so just the it's 13. Just a, it's just a flat yeah, roll at this point. All right, yeah. All right. that misses. Well. But if it stands back up, it'll be great. Because <laughs> you'll have the fairy fire on it. Well, and everyone can everyone take advantage. Uh, yeah, it's the, uh, because of the fairy fire. Yeah. Yeah. Also, isn't it advantage if it's prone? Uh, it's pr it's advantage melee. if it's prone and you're within five feet of it. Yeah, for right. melee attacks, I should say. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, right. um, uh, Erky, is that your turn? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you wanted to, you could climb the rope. That's just movement. The rope's still down. Yeah, but like, I'm testing my gear here. here. I'm feeling well, yeah, something. I mean, you can, don't bother me. I'm, you can do I'm that. pushing buttons. You, you can, you you can do that from within a, a safe space. So you basically tripped a ghost. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we won't worry about yes. how that worked. Trixie is concerned yeah. with the uh, <laughs> with how physics works. She's no uh, scientist. Tricks you, sir, now? Uh, I think so, yeah. 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 Are you still on the uh, uh, third dimensional place? Yeah. Uh, it lasts for an yeah. hour. <laughs> like. <laughs> Alright, could I lean out of it, like, use, bracing myself against the rope, or like. and, and, and cast something? Uh, I give you too much leeway on this already, didn't I? Um, because I could make you come out, but then you'll just like go back in afterwards. Exactly. Right? So, like, yeah. 
Oh, uh, right. Like, half moving out. You, not moving back yeah, because all you have to yeah. do is come out like a five foot square. I only have to come out of one foot. <laughs> yeah, so I was, I was just reading the, the, the stats on climbing, swimming, or crawling. And it says each foot of movement costs an extra foot to move. And then unless yeah. a creature has a climb or something, blah, 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 blah. Climbing a slippery vertical surface or one with few handholds requires a strength athletics check. Is a rope considered having handholds? I would argue I that know. a rope... Well, I would argue that Trixie would have prepared for this eventuality and tied knots in the rope to allow for easy just, access. Just question, just question. Um, I mean, either way, I feel like you're not going to get anywhere near close enough to this creature, so just do your thing. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> let's see. I can't do that. I'm close enough for that, but that does potentially make things worse for... Uh, I might not actually be able to do anything. Um, can you or can't, can't you? <laughs> I mean, I technically could do something, but potentially people aren't going to like it. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to cast sleep on it. We'll, we'll see if I hit the uh, HP requirement. <laughs> oh, it's probably got a bunch of AP, yeah. Or it, HP. Well, so... How many HP can you affect? If I were to roll max, oh, it's right. 5d8. Right, gotcha. So it's based 40. on how you roll. Yeah. 40 is the max you could do? 40 is the max I could All do. Right. Would that no. come anywhere near? Okay. I mean, I'm still going to do it because I already said I'm going to do it, and Trixie would not yeah. know. Right. But... It's it. We already know it's gonna fail. So, but I'll still roll. Let's let's see what I get. Um, wow, that actually isn't bad. Uh, eight and uh, seventeen, twenty-four, twenty-nine. That is a pretty solid roll, but. but... That's, but it but, doesn't yeah, do anything. It, it doesn't do anything. So, darn. All right. So is that your turn? That's my turn. Okay. I, I go back into the. <laughs> you just hear Trixie say hole, shit. Effectively. I go back into the hole. Yep. yep. All right, Cleet. Let's see. Um... I am gonna cast Shillelagh on myself as a bonus action, and then I'm going to run up and hit it. So, How long does Shillelagh last? Uh, let's see here. It... I think it's just a single attack. Duration one minute. Okay, so you had already oh. cast it before. Did I? Okay. Yeah, you cast it, then you hit the, hit the rock. All right, well, I still got it then, so I'm just going to swing on it. And yeah. I get advantage for it being fairy fired, right? Yes. I mean, you could take either the advantage for fairy fire or the advantage for it being yeah. prone, but not both. That is so take your a pick. 17, and then a reroll is a 12, so 17. Okay, you hit it. That is 8 points of damage. Okay. All right. Do you have any other, like a bonus action or anything you um, want to do? My bonus action, I tell Varicus, um, "I'll protect you, friend." And I, as as I, um, I step between him and the monster. What a brave noble man you are! What a brave, strange person. All right. So it is Joey's turn. Um, see he's gonna 
cast. He's gonna cast here cure wounds on himself. If that's reasonable, and he gets back nine HP. I actually did damage to Erky on the character sheet instead of Joey. What? By mistake. That's my bad. I have fixed that now. You don't put me on initiative and you reassign damage I know. to me. What's I'm going on? I'm such an asshole. It's unbelievable. You really don't want to be... Yeah. yeah, you said you liked it, but I'm like, nah, you're, you're gonna die. Okay. <laughs> Alright, uh, so he does that. Cure wounds. Is that just a... It's just an action. Okay. Um, he's just gonna stay there. So it is Varicus's turn. All right, I'm inspired by Cleet's amazing display of, of bravery, and I press forward with my sword attack using my booming blade, the 23 to hit. That hits. <laughs> and 11 damage. Okay. Surprisingly, so the... that does hit. <laughs> um, so if the creature ever moves, now that Booming Blade has affected it, it takes 1d8 damage. Okay. Good stuff. Uh, so, based on where you guys are positioned, there's nowhere that it can move to not provoke an opportunity attack and get out of the grease, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, although, it does have to spend... I think it's half its movement getting stand up. up. Okay. Well, oh, then it's up. just going to stand up. And then it is going to attack Varicus. It's 12. 12 to hit. No. Okay. Unfortunate. That's and then does it have to make another deck save at the end of its turn? Yes, it does. At the end of every turn. You see fifteen. Okay, it rolls a twenty. So Okay, so it remains standing. Like a legit twenty, not a not a fudge bullshit DM twenty. <laughs> that was a full on crit. <laughs> that was a full on crit. So it wasn't a dirty twenty or a super dirty twenty. No. Very, very clean. What size is the monster? Oh, it is huge. He's filling a 15 by 15 So foot it's bigger square, than a large. So. I don't. Yep. Yes. Never mind. Yes. Forget it. By, like, <laughs> word categories, yes. Yeah. I don't know how big it should actually be on the screen. All right, but it's big. All right, Erky. It is your turn. All right. Let's no try this again. For you. With advantage, because it's standing now. Uh, all right. Uh, we'll start off with Firebolt. Uh, 10, 12. Oh, miss. Yeah. All right. Move on to the Force Ballista. Grease isn't flammable, is it? 30, 20. That hits, for sure. All right. So 30, 20 goes, and then uh, damage is 2d8, force damage, uh, 7, and could be knocked back up to 5 feet, given how big it is. I'm thinking about that. Or maybe it, it, it doesn't have friction. It's, it's on the grease. So I was just move. thinking it's <laughs> probably going to move. All right, so... Which means positioning-wise, it's gonna slam into uh, or Joey. Joey. What's what's jo Joey? Yeah, but it's only moving five feet, so it's still technically in the grease. Sorry, I think I just moved you, uh, Cleet. So if it's forced to move in the grease, does it 
does it no. make sense to roll again? <laughs> Alright guys, I'm no, I'm it, gonna I'm it's... gonna I think in my turn I'm gonna cast uh spike growth, so we should move it around as much as it can. Oh. Somehow well, I... it should take damage oh. from my Well that that, spell that completely too. ruined what I was gonna do, but that's fine. I mean I guess it depends on where you were gonna cast it and how big it is. It's uh yeah, well first of all, yeah, you're uh, right, uh Varikas, you're right, it takes damage from moving because of your booming blade. Huh? Right. So what well, booming blade if it moves it takes it, one damage. Uh, it really? activates booming blade. That's so great. <laughs> it does, Dude, yeah. One <laughs> Oh man! There we go. That's sorry. That's the that's the triple combo. I moved it to the wrong layer. We're good to go now. <laughs> Spike Rose is a, is a right. twenty foot radius. So sphere. It moves how far? Uh, five feet. All right, five feet, five feet this so way. But it's still in the green. Joey is gonna take. Give him, a, give, him a, give him a deck save at least to like maybe can jump out of the way. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. At least, and, and, at well, least. It's a, Fine. <laughs> just willingly, willingly stand in there do. waiting. So it's like an opportunity attack, so he doesn't get the damage from booming. Oh, because okay. he did, did not oh, willingly okay. move. Got it. All right, he fails his deck save. Joey takes six damage. Or Joey. I know. But this is move. this this whole fight is it'll just give him like. Um, inspiration for his next song it'll be just be about this story so exactly it's gonna be such we a are uh, we're yeah, doing him a favor story. i'm sure he'll see it that way uh okay so that brings us to trixie's turn yep okay go trixie you seven damage from booming blood uh no because he moved unwillingly it doesn't it has to be willing movement. Oh, is it? Well, oh, we can also yeah. like, oh, opportunity attack because you didn't have right. to do this. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> also, not provoked by force movement, right? Yeah. All right. Move yeah. Trixie. Um. Hmm. Does this give any indication of how far up? Okay. Are you coming out of the magical um, rope space? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna go all the way down to the ground. I'm gonna stay here though. Um, but then, at the end of my turn, if I can grab my circle here. It's not letting me grab my circle. Put the circle there, because that's going to be my familiar. Um, is there... I don't know if there's any other... I mean, I can just create a new one. Oh, he created the circle, so I think um, Rob has to move it. I... I, no, create the I created the small circle right next to oh, okay. uh, my token. Um, so I should be able to move it. Uh, maybe... Zoom in, I can get a better. Oh, there we go. Good, because I can't uh, do anything with it. Alright. And that is all I can do. That's all I'm going to do right now. Okay. Cleat. So if you could put the spike growth on the other side of the monster, because my familiar only has two HP. <laughs> so you just tell her not to move. Oh well, the point is, I'm gonna be able to grant advantage whether it's prone or not, because it can use the help action, and then it All doesn't right, matter. So what's my movement? I'm movement speed. Where are you? Thirty. So I can go to one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And then I'm gonna cast Spike Growth, which has a. Where are you, Spike Growth? Where... Should be a 
four by four. Twenty square. foot radius, right? Oh. Twenty foot radius, yeah. Never mind. That's an eight by eight. So eight by eight, Jesus. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, that's ridiculous. It's basically that. Oops. Damn. Didn't mean to do that. There we go. Come on. There we go. I'm anticipating friendly damage. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm gonna. Oh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're yeah, moving I know, yourself too. I'm gonna put it right there. <laughs> With the entirety of the spike growth in between you and the creature. Yes. And the cat. Ah, well, that's what's going on. You, I understand now. You, you, you have now completely ruined my plans. <laughs> the cat gives you a dirty look. <laughs> uh, Got to reposition the horse ballista so I can knock him into the spike growth. So. This creature is blue. Actually, I'm gonna put it right, right oh, okay. there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. That's my turn. Okay. What can Joey do in this situation? Not a whole lot, from what I understand. Oh, you know, with, actually, with my bonus action, I'm gonna. Oh no, I can't do that. Never mind. Continue. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Joey is going to. It's gonna cast dissonant whispers again, because why not? At first level. Save first. Ooh. All right, it fails and takes twelve damage. Must immediately use this reaction to move as far as its speed allows away from you. Okay, I, for, I didn't realize that was part of it. All right, so it takes 12 damage. And then... What's the, what's the thing with spike growth? Every, hmm? is it every like, five foot it moves and the spike growth takes like four. But it's also passing the grease. Uh, sorry, 2d4. Oh, you're right, 2d4, yeah. Uh, the grease only affects it uh, the, the grease only affects it um, at the end of its turn. So if it's still within the, um, the area of the grease uh, at the end Whoa, of its turn, it then it will the have to make the, the saving throw again. It's moving its entire movement speed of 30 away from Joey. Oh. The, uh, the cat is tiny. Isn't it also invisible? Um, well, no, it's it's visible, but it's it's tiny, so it can move through. Like it's going to be able to, to sit there without any issue, unless it actively attacks the cat. Then it's it, nothing's going to happen to it. So first um, first question: How why? many? How many? What's the spike? How many growth? feet did it move through the spike growth? One, two, three. Like four squares. <laughs> eight, so eight D four. Eight D four damage. Yeah, nice. that's a lot of damage. Oh yeah. Eight. Yeah, then could use some flex tape. <laughs> no. That's twenty two no. points of damage. Twenty two. Twenty two. Not, oh, not wow. too shabby. And then also does For D4s, does Marikas does Marikas get an oh, attack of opportunity? Hold on. 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 It's difficult terrain. It only it, it it has to use twice the amount of movement to get through it, so it only moves fifteen yes. feet. I think it still takes all the damage, but it's uh it only moves fifteen yep, so feet through. Okay. So on one, it. two, three. 
it's a good, this quality team sport here. <laughs> yeah, it becomes difficult terrain for the duration. Yep. Oh. Varicus, make me a deck save to get out of the way of this rampaging monster. Twenty-two. Oh yeah. You're chill. That'll that'll do. You move to right here. <laughs> Deftly step out of the way. Uh, would Joey have gotten an attack of opportunity, even if that was yes. provoked by? Okay. Yes, because it was willing movement. Wait. He's gonna make a rapier attack. And also your booming blade triggers also. If that's a free movement. Hot damn! He's taking a lot of damage. Yes, I do believe well, that yeah, is he the takes case. four from minimum damage from Joey's rapier attack. Kaboom. And then what's the booming blade damage? It's D8. Oh, roll your damage. Your right attack. So. Yeah. Uh, six points of damage. Nice, ah. nice. Yeah. Nice. Hey, All right. So, <laughs> be, be, be. There we go. I can math. Strong, independent DM. Okay. Where are you standing on my cat now, Vericus? <laughs> He's making sure it's okay. Does, Everybody's concerned does, about does the, the cat. Does the cat get a deck save? <laughs> the cat's tiny. It can move through creatures larger. It, it can move through spaces with creatures larger than it. Okay. I think that brings us like, to Vericus's turn. Actual turn, yeah. I'm gonna uh, within five feet of said monster, right? I'm gonna stay away and use my firebolt. We'll say he's fine. Oh, you would have just moved to the north of it, right? From the deck save. Oh, I missed anyway. Oh, here? Yeah, I mean, I guess like, you would take yeah. you would take an attack of opportunity, right? Oh, yeah. If you were to move farther away from it, well, I'd... never mind. I'll just stay here then. Like, I, I, it's if you move out of range. Like, if you're like circling around it, I don't think you take opportunity to cast. You're still facing... right, right. If you move, if you move within uh, any squares that are actively around yeah. it, which actually, uh, due to the nature of the beast, um. I think if he were to move just straight uh, east, he wouldn't provoke an opportunity attack because he's technically in cover there, and then he's in full cover. He's like half cover and then full cover. Like, I'm not entirely sure how that works. I'll let you figure it out. These are not but... the kind of questions for me as a DM. <laughs> but I... Rule however you want. If he takes an opportunity to attack, he takes an opportunity. Yeah. Alright, do you want to move to there, Vericus? Well, I don't want to provoke an opportunity attack. Alright, well then scooch back a little bit. <laughs> All right, I'll just, yeah. Or I can make it at disadvantage because you're hiding behind the rock. I'll probably get killed anyway, so I'll <laughs> okay. go now. Fair enough. So you'll just stand right next to it to potentially get killed. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Right. First. Sound. Okay, uh, are you going to make an attack? I did and I missed. Oh, right. My bad. Okay, that brings Point us... Blank wasn't close enough. The critter's turn. Um, it is going to make an attack on Barracus, because you're the only one in range. Would you consider that half cover? Is that disadvantage? No, it's just plus two to his AC. Okay. Um, sure. Because it's trying to, like, swing its tail between these two big rocks. Yeah. Why, why the hell not? I'm a generous guy. Probably should be. You guys have barely taken any damage. Yeah, it just says... You take the opportunity attack when you move, move out of the reach of the creature. Wow. But the definition of out of the reach of the creature is fluid, well, it doesn't matter because it's still yeah. within it rolled reach. A, a th an eleven to hit, so it do doesn't matter. Cool. All right, Erky. Uh, All right. 
Actually, it's going to move the rest of the way out of this spike growth. Oh, oh is it? Um, so that's another three, okay. I think, feet of... Okay, I can do that. Three, so that's 64. Shit. That is another 13 damage. Okay. And I believe it does actually also take a uh, opportunity attack from Barracus. Yes, it would. Okay. All right, a second chance to miss. Oh, I rolled a 20. That definitely hits. And uh, 13 damage. And Booming Blade is applied again. Which then immediately activates because it's moving. Jesus. Yeah, because it's Am I wrong? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's true. Yeah, because the it's opportunity small. attack happens before the movement happens. And then how many is Booming Blade? D8. Oh, yeah. Uh, D8. Yeah, you get a lot of value of that Booming Blade. Nice. <laughs> Definitely. Because <laughs> yeah. oh, I keep forgetting about it moving uh, the creature. <laughs> well... He just now applied it, but because he applies it and then the creature moves, it's all good. Yeah. Roll the one, so not a huge detriment. Every bit counts, man. Every bit counts. Hey, yeah. All right, Erky, it's it's your turn. Like, make the difference between another round of attack. So, uh, so Fairfire is still active. I think we're on round three of ten for that one minute concentration. You guys are starting to see kind of cracks emitting bright light around the uh, the kind of shell of right. this spectral Fire creature. Bolts, uh, hit on the 20, max damage. Oh, no, not max, just eight damage. Uh, shooting with the uh, force ballista is going to walk 50 feet, angle out a little bit. It's you say light. eight with your firebolt? No, it's correct. Eight with the firebolt. Uh, now shooting with the force ballista. Uh, so that's a when you hit it with your firebolt, real quick, mm -hmm. the outer kind of form of this creature starts to kind of crack and shatter, like spider web cracks all the way around it, mm -hmm. and it just kind of explodes and the shards of this kind of fly out in all directions. Oh. I would like <laughs> no, Barricus, oh no. Cleet, and Joey to make- And the cat. Uh, Dex. And the cat. Yeah, the, oh. cat, the cat, the cat, of course. <laughs> Thank you, Cleet. Uh, Dex save, you yes. said? Yes, please. Ooh, I rolled a four. Uh, Kiss also uh, still have that uh, half cover, uh, plus two AC. That's a nine. <laughs> I love the explosion. Got an eighteen. Okay, <laughs> Barakus, you take two damage. You other guys take four. Because they're like crap. All right. The uh, uh, o o opalescence uh, disappears. <laughs> she takes the, the two damage. Oh my over. god. Okay. Yep. Do I? I'm standing what? 20, 15 feet away Cleet. from what the cat? Do I see this? Cleet is yep. weeping. I I lose yep. I lose yeah, I my shit. So <laughs> hold on, let me hold hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me let me let me describe oh, exactly. Let me let me tell you exactly what it says. Um, when your familiar drops to zero hit points, it disappears, leaving behind no physical form. Mm-hmm. So there's no body or anything. So all I see, so all I see is, is a giant just monster explode, and then when the uh, the dust clears, there's no more cat. Yes. Um, I, I I fall to my knees, and um, and raise my hands to the sky and say, "Why? Why? Opalescence? Why? Why have you? Why were you taken <laughs> before you your forsaken time?" Me? <laughs> I will always remember you. I can. Can I just take an action and turn to Erky and be like, "He does know I can just resummon her, right?" 
<laughs> so after the explosion <laughs> and you guys have your kind of quick little thing you there's just kind of this bright light emanating from what was the sort of central form of this creature mm-hmm. and in its place you see sort of like what you saw on the boat a guy like so what? one of the medium sized guys only he is what is yeah it? he's make it bigger so you can actually see it you see one of these guys a yeah. shield and a spear um, but he is still blue Still, still kind of spectral and blue, um, and he has glowing red eyes. Uh, so oh, I fun. took out the so, creature okay. during my yeah. action. I still have my bonus action to hit. Correct. I already yes. rolled for that. It was twenty-three to hit. So um, that hits now. Uh, damage. Uh, Thirty-eight. Nine. Okay. Okay, that's my turn. Alright. Trixie. Well, oh, I was going to try this again against the big... Oh. Uh, uh, this way. I mean, that's not going to particularly matter for me. Oh, uh... <laughs> Since it's on the edge, what is it? Is is it in the circle? Uh, yeah, you, you, have to use, <laughs> you have to use five... You have to move through it five feet for it to trigger, so I don't think that triggers. Okay. Okay, so no. he's not there okay. five feet. Yeah. Re- but if he gets hit another he's five, he's definitely right. in heaven. Yeah. Right. Well, um, we're gonna see if he goes to sleep. Right. Yeah, I think that's the, the uh, bed of thorns. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I figure it might. Well, I guess not. Uh, the fairy fire. Any attack? With, I, well, no, I know, but it is now changed. What? Is this considered the same creature, or is it a new creature? Uh, oh, um, I have no idea. It has changed shape. What's like a a wild form? Okay, so like if it were like a druid who had wild shaped and then transformed back, I think it would still the fairy fire would still affect. So if if that's the the type of uh, what, what s- he was um, like in like scenario which save do you take? that's basically what Once you're he was like the driver inside which okay. which save do you take for <laughs> okay. maintaining concentration of a spell what constitution uh do constitution uh, cuz i got hit i got hit by that damage but i'm still holding up the spike growth oh nice it's a saving throw yeah, it's a saving is... throw how did i put my php uh, yes, it is a constant. And I have to roll a 10 throw. because it's so little damage. Which I didn't. It goes away. Yes. Wah, wah. Ah, okay. Damn it. it but it did, it did a lot of work. Like, how many, uh, it did quite a bit of work. But, like, a lot. <laughs> uh, oh, it did a shitload of damage. It was eight, and then. Six. Was it six? Was it, it was just the two rounds? So 14 total? Yeah. I don't remember. It did 22. It was, wait, it there did 22 big... and then 13. Right, but it was it was a total of 14 d4s, right? Yeah. Yeah. Eight eight and and yeah. And then, yeah. And then yeah. six. It's impressive. Nice. All right. Oh, this is uh, this is no bueno. Uh, that's 16. 18. Well, I mean, it's, it's it's okay. Two eights, a two, and two ones. Uh, so, does he have less than 20 hit points? No. You're so and, damn uh, close, but... <laughs> he does not fall asleep. Okay. And Trixie is like, damn it, this worked before! <laughs> Crawl back in your hole. So spectacularly that you can't... You gotta keep trying, right? I, I, I'm... Okay. Uh, Tr- Trixie is actually actively fuming right now, like, full-on face red, like, anime, you know, vein Whatever popping out of the is, forehead. Yeah. Like, 
Yeah, it's she's she's pissed. Okay, Cleet, it is your turn. All right, so I I still have Shillelagh up. Man, I was gonna if I hadn't locked Constraint, I was gonna I was gonna thorn whip him through my stuff, but it's not gonna happen. So I just run up and I attack. That's a seven. I don't think that's gonna hit him. No, it does not. Okay. Is he still fairy fired? All right, we're good. He oh, is okay. actually. So he yes. yeah. Yep. I think we got it for. Oh, that was wrong. Oh, for that's a round. crit. Hey. Oh boy. Okay. Boom. That hits. That for sure. <laughs> um, In case you needed me to so say that. Max damage. Plus uh, oh, another... So I rolled a four plus three, is a seven plus eight, is um, fifteen total. The way we're doing, the way we're doing crits, it's a fifteen total. So again, you guys see just these kind of spider web cracks going around this thing, but it is still standing there. Uh, that brings us to. Joey's turn. Um, he is. Let's see. Where's that silly? D. Sorry, keep losing his spells. All right, he is going to cast Dissonant Whispers one more time. Needs to roll. Good. Oh, it just passes. <laughs> and then, is that one half on a. Sorry. Got my own. Usually they're half on them. Half as much damage doesn't have to move away. Okay. Okay. All right. That is... Oh, and on Joey's turn, he says, all right, let's try this again. Kick his ass at Varicus gives you bardic inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Okay, I charge at this uh, blizzard man and I attack him with my sword. It's a 24 to hit. Oh I... yeah, baby. That sure hits. And 10 damage and booming blade is applied. How does it look when you how do you want to shatter this thing's spectral form? With a lovely song and dance number from Joey. <laughs> it's like a, a power... So it's, like a it's power so you dead. run over, How's grab like, Joey, yeah! and... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this thing... Turn this attack to 11. This thing... Once again, you see kind of light spray out in all different directions from this thing. And one more time, go ahead and make me dex saving throws. Uh, that would be Varicus and Cleet. All right, you guys are gonna take... <laughs> You're each gonna take one damage. Sweet. Nice. And <laughs> what? Dog shit. <laughs> Not to lose now. Not you guys. Just uh, Cleet and Varicus and Joey. Okay. Well, we... Did we get? We were smart and got far enough away. Yeah. You're way far away. I followed it, followed your lead, and the range of these things is like, like. Yeah. Under twenty. You guys feet. never have to get yeah, anywhere like... near anything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I technically do for some of my other spells, like um, Color Spray is 15-foot cone, 
Um, Tasha's hideous laughter is 30 feet. But, like, I don't have to get, like, super close. All right, so we are out of initiative. This thing shatters into a million little pieces. Some of them hate you guys. You're not too much the worst for wear. Um, but now standing in that same spot, you see the same form, but it's just kind of a pale white, maybe a little bit of blue in there, and it has very pale blue eyes. Um, and it kind of looks at Varicus and Cleet, um, and everybody who's in the area, Joey, Erky, and Trixie as well, you guys just hear in your minds, you hear, Thank you, adventurers. Hmm. And it's still there. It just stays there. You can respond. Yeah. Who who are you? (laughs) My name is Shiko Tenkatl. I have been imprisoned or embodied in this stone for thousands of years. Uh, I have protected this place and this mighty arcane engine uh, to protect... (laughs) To protect the people and creatures of this land from its power. Only recently have these stones emerged from the earth This can only be the result of powerful, powerful magics drawing them up from the ancient depths where they were hidden. Hmm. Anybody? What would cause (laughs) such an occurrence to happen? I can think of a few people. Well, player-wise, I can think of a few people. (laughs) Uh, I say, I think we should... I, I turn to well. Joey and I say, Joey, I think we should play these musical rocks again for a uh, for to celebrate our triumph and to impress our wispy friend here. Our wispy friend. I like it. All right. Do you touch one of the rocks? I, I go over and tap the rock with my shillelagh. All right, nothing happens. Oh, boo! Sorry, Glee. Uh, I, I, I want, I want you to broke. celebrate both our, our glorious victory and to mourn the loss of our dear friend, Opalescence. <laughs> oh, the cat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, are you saying anything to Shikotenkatl? You can call him Shiko. I look at him and I kind of, kind of squ- uh, squint a little bit and look at him. And I say, um, Shintaquadal, you, you look like many of the lizards I've seen in the in in the swamp. Where where do you come from? Oh, I was born very near to this place. But many, many ages ago, in the Dawn Age, when my people ruled this world, I was... When our empire began to fall, I was charged with protecting this magical thingy (laughs) over here. Uh, Arcane engine. Yeah, that's what I called it before. Uh, yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. I'm very old. I get forgetful sometimes. Uh, but it says, I think I said all that. Yeah. I say, well, now, this now is long, long. Now ago. that we Shinto Kuala, now that we have um, uh, released this ancient stone from your protection and will you are you able to move on and um and pass on with peace and with the next life ah that is a very kind thought of you from you druid but 
It appears that my work is not quite done. If someone was able to draw these stones from the earth, then it is still part of my responsibility to find out who it may be and why they are doing this. This kind of magic should not be possible in this age. Uh, can you... Do you know who is doing this? We can stop them for you. Oh, 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 ancient lizard. Of the swamp. I just want to say that magic is also made clear a very eloquent speaker. <laughs> lizard friend. All he needed oh, was to be clean. Lizard friend. I like lizard friends. I will, I will protect lizard friend. I will do lizard friend's job and and kill these 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 bad people. How, tell us where to go. I, alas, I do not know. Uh, I feel certain magics in the area, but I must investigate further. Uh, you know, of course, my initial reaction was that you had done it, and would, that's why I attacked. But, uh, and then Joey kind of chimes in. He says, hey, what, what about me? I've been here touching these stones for, like, two weeks and making sounds. What, how did that not do anything? And uh, Shiko Tenkaro says, to be honest, I didn't notice you were there my little friend you're very small and joey just kind of scowls and looks pissed folds his arms uh trixie joins him in being pissed about being referred to as small being that <laughs> she is also tiny yeah fair enough um he says well allow me to give you all a gift for helping me free myself from this prison of sorts but it at least I am now free enough to figure out what is going on in this place alright and he hands Cleet because he has referred to him as swamp friend uh, he hands Cleet he takes off a necklace that has what appear to be very long claws, like five of them on it. Um, they're just very long, very sharp claws. Mm. And he hands it to Cleet. Um, he also takes um, a little crystal out of his, uh, out of like a pouch. He's got like, you know, a loincloth. It's tucked into the folds. Um, and he also hands that to Cleet. It was in his pocket. Uh, <laughs> Chill. The, the, the pocket in the loincloth? <laughs> it was like his cloaca. Hey, it's hey. Warm and sticky. Nature's pocket <laughs> does exist. I'm just going to leave it at uh, that. Not for him. He's got a cloaca. It's different. <laughs> Is that not a space to shove oh. thing? We can debate that later. Let's move on. <laughs> so he hands Moving Cleet on. Uh, a small Aggressively crystal. Aggressively revealing I mean, your probably... nature's pocket. Yeah. Ex aggressively exposing Aggressively exposing Cleet. my nature's pocket. Oh, too much. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so he gives you a necklace and a, kind of a crystal wand. Okay, I look at it. Am I able to... Um sense any uh, magic in these items? Uh, you do sense magic. Why don't you make me an Arcana check? Arcana. Oh, that's a crit fail. Oh. Cleet thinks they're very pretty. They are pretty. Um, I, uh. I, I accept them in my hands and I, I bow to my lizard swamp friend and I say... Thank you for bestowing upon me these great tokens of, of, of the swamp. I will forever be in your debt, friend. Oh, he says, well, I am in your debt, swamp friend. Is that 
a common term in this in this day? Yes. In this age? Without a no. doubt, yes. No, 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 no. Stop One thousand make times. Make no. me come. I would like you each to make me persuasion checks. Now. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. That was too perfect. Stop trying to make swamp friends happen. <laughs> too, so don't worry. <laughs> okay. Uh, he looks a little confused, but it, it's probably a language barrier <laughs> thing, even though he's like in your heads and everything. Um, but anyways, he says, well, it's time for me to go and try and find out what I can about the, you know, magical situation going on here. Oh, I have one question. Uh, I have is one there question. anything else I could do for you? Um, as a druid, I'm able to recognize other druids and speak druidic. Do, do I recognize him as a druid? Yes, you do. Oh, so in druidic, I say to him... What's druidic for swamp friend? I say, I say, <laughs> you'll always be my swamp friend. Goodbye and good luck. He kind of nods at you and kind of puts his hands together in a, in a gesture of thank you. And with that, he kind of starts kind of glowing, pulsing again. And then he turns no, into glow. a small reptilian creature, but with wings and flies off to the west. Uh, towards Gantamon. What did he turn into? Like a little pterodon, or let's see what's Rampadon. the actual something small, but you know, like that. A, uh, a reptilian bird. Yeah, a small reptilian bird, not not um, large. Oh, what are they? Think called? of like a raven, but there's a bunch. Of them. I I I think like. At least in terms of like dinosaurs, I think I know generally what you're talking about. Is oh. one in the monster manual. I just try to keep trying to flip to the wrong page. Do do. Um, no, it's just Pteranodon, which is wingspans of 15 to 20 feet. <laughs> we'll go with that. He turns into a Pteranodon, a spectral oh. blue oh, Pteranodon, uh, oh, which oh, would be. Hold on. So I can give you. Let me just try and find where this stupid thing is. Well, it would be a pterodon in the Ninth Age lingo, so we'll go with that. Yeah. But he turns well, into I mean, that. I mean, I was just you, you would you had initially said tiny, so I was gonna look up what the tiny flying uh, dinosaur was. Well, now he's a baby pterodon. Ginormous and. Okay. I know what you're talking that about. That is also that, that, that's also reasonable. Yeah. Now he's ginormous. He has a 15 foot wingspan and flies away kind of slow gigantic wing flaps to the west. Um, as that happens, you're all kind of in stunned silence and you just hear Joey you're all looking that direction watching it fly off and just Joey just says, "Shit." <laughs> That was crazy! That was insane, man! <laughs> yeah. Like, while, while it's still fresh in my memory, I'm gonna use my magical tinkering to make, I can make these little magical objects and, like, pictures, so, like... Dimorphodon. Right, so, yeah. like, a picture of, like, Dimorphodon flying off, a picture of the crazy big magical creature, and, uh, yeah. a picture of it exploding. So, um, yeah. From, from my memory, I'm just imprinting this on. It just takes a couple hours. <laughs> Fair so, I, I, I want to be able to show these things. They're it's like, so, you want to know what this uh, big crystal tower is? Well, here, here you go. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. They'll be very happy. Yeah. So, what you're saying is you deployed your arcane cell phone. So, the arcane cell phone camera. I can't make yep. sending stones, but uh, uh, not quite. I need, need another. Maybe you can make the ones that will connect to the ones that Sunset has. Oh yeah, I have no idea what to do with them. 
All right. Yep. So I think I only have one. Okay. Just like so. prank call. <laughs> Different campaign. Uh, Don't worry about uh, it. Uh, right. <laughs> All right. So what would you like to do now? I think, well, uh, first, uh, the, the stones are staying where they are. They're not, like, going back into the earth or anything, right? No. I think we should go... So, the... Go ahead. Uh, no, I was thinking, like, the opening of the... The opening where he came out of, like... Oh, okay, yeah. Now? That closed as soon as he... As soon as the beast came out of it. Oh, okay. Good point. Want to want, 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 want hit, hit it again? <laughs> no, I already, well, I already hit the stones and not making any more noise. Sure. You can so make they stop making okay. checks, or you can just touch it. Touch it. Go on. I'll, I'll do an Ar Arcana check. While this is going on, um, 30, 20. Trixie is going to... You tell me if I need to make a, a deception or maybe a performance even a persuasion check for this, but Trixie's gonna look very sad and dejected right now because obviously she just lost a dear <laughs> friend. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I, I immediately go over to Trixie and, and... Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Give me, give, do a performance do check perform and I'll do an yeah. insight check. Okay. Um Yo. Nine insight for Cleet. I would like to point out that I just have to roll a three or higher to get um or no performance um is only five, so I've got to roll a five or higher. But... Oh wow, huh? um, it's a push. <laughs> oh okay, it's a push. <laughs> that was a four plus five. So it comes out of the. Oh no, I guess you're trying to deceive me. So that means um, I rolled equal to you. So it means I, I see through it. Is that is that right with the rules? Maybe yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I I I mean. Arguably, I rolled the same as you, and so, you know, I... You did the performance first, so Cleet was rolling against yours. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, I it's mean, like rolling for roll. armor. If I roll equal to your armor, it's, I, I, it's a success, right? Right, right, but depending on whose perspective you're at, at this point, because I'm a... I'm, effectively attacking your investigation check or your insight check and you're attacking my performance well, check. But he wouldn't have insighted until after you no, were No, no, I, I, no. I, right, right. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. It's, 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 it, it, it um, goes to you. I, I, so I notice, what do I, D, <laughs> DM, tell me what I notice. About her, her uh, Trixie's Trixie? just kind of like moping around like She's not putting any effort into it, clearly, she, but she's she's moping she's around. She's doing kind of things that sad per a sad person would do, but she just doesn't really look sad. Really? <laughs> so you're you're kind of confused. Um, you understand why she would be sad after losing her friend, but you're not really buying it. So, uh, Joey basically says you know um well i mean i took some some hits there so uh i think i'm just gonna go back to wilhelm's hobbit uh is that where you guys are staying going yes it is what are you what yeah. are you doing let's go Get a drink. okay so, are you guys so making your way back to town? We are. Okay. Yeah. So, on your walk back... Trixie will walk towards the back, slumped shoulders, head down. 
and nobody seems making to care. a giant spectacle of it, but nobody seems to care. Yeah. So you're really just being at the annoying. very least. At the very least, based on the comments Trixie made to Erky, like Erky would absolutely know Trixie's <laughs> full of shit. <laughs> All right, try not so you guys your hat. <laughs> make your way back to town. Um, oh. So let's say on the way, you magic eat folks do a little bit more investigating of these items that you were given. Uh, I mean, I can roll Arcana on them. Yeah, it's you're pretty, pretty. investigating them on your way back. Let's just say you take twenty on it. Um, and you have. Make sure I am. It's not even in that book because it's made up. All right, so you have this kind of necklace with claws on it. You start to feel like if you took one of these claws and like kind of cracked it, you would be faster uh, in that you have a, I'm going to call it the claw necklace of haste. So it has five charges. If you break one of these as a bonus action, um, well, would it be an action or a bonus action? Because then you could cause the haste to start. So charges. Uh, I would argue that I would argue that it's a bonus action. Because then you have However, two actions after the bonus action. All right. Yeah, so, so a bonus action, yeah. you activate this thing. And it casts yeah. haste on whoever breaks the claw. Okay. Quick question. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of rules lawyer here a little bit. Okay. Uh, what is the is it a is it a like is there a recharge to it or do you just only have five charges and then it's done? It's just five, and there's no yeah. charge. Okay. Yeah. The claws are broken. Right okay. Now. That's. That's that's fine. I just I wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to be like ridiculously broken, where like it recharged all five charges on a long rest or something. No. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not going to give you guys uh, that much. This is five yeah, in the next yeah. in the rest of this campaign. This yeah. Half okay. Season. Okay. That's yeah. That's that's perfectly that's perfectly balanced. I would say. Um, and then if you were going to have any sort of recharge on it, I would say it, it recharges 1d4 on a Well, you're saying like you actually destroy one of the claws to make it happen, so I think it's just... Yeah, you're right. going to take one yeah. claw off and you actually physically Consumable. make it. Yeah. Um, so the other so. thing that it gave you is kind of the crystal crystalline wand. You notice that as you're kind of handling it, that if you kind of flip it up and down, there's actually inside the crystalline structure is a like a bubble of water in an opening in there that kind of moves back and forth. Um, and what you have is a wand of peeling waters. Um, so basically this one does have two charges that recharge on a long rest. And wand of basically as, yes. So as an action, the person who, or as a bonus action, whoever's using it can expend one of the charges on a member of the party, and that person gets a, they get a five up on a D6, Aegis save. So you roll a D6, if you get five or six, you take zero damage. Oh. Um, you can mm. also how many use. Do you say it has two charges. They recharge. Both recharge on a long rest. You can also use both charges if it still has two to give a four plus on a d6 age of save. Okay. Um. This is a ninth age spell, yeah. basically. <laughs> Right, right. I'm just, I'm just trying to, to, to figure out. I almost want to say it would probably something like this would likely be an actual action, not a bonus action. Um, although I could see probably reasons to use it as a reaction. Scope. Right. That's the other thing. Is like maybe it would be used as a reaction. Because we're trying to prevent so, damage. 
right? Yeah, I, I, maybe maybe that's the better way to do it. Is it, it it can be used as a reaction, but then again, like, what's the range on it? Uh, yeah, range and how well. long does it last for? So my thought was that it was just like a one turn shield kind of mm -hmm. thing. So it's just gonna last. Okay, so that would so it's definitely a reaction. Or until like yeah, the I would end say, of your next turn. Yeah, I think it should be a reaction. Yeah, so I would use it as okay. I would use it as a reaction, although it can so there are some spells that you can cast as a reaction on other people that last until the end of that yeah. person's next turn. Um, so okay. that's kind of yeah, what, we'll I would, go with that. what I would uh, do this as. Yes. So it's a reaction. Obviously, no item is better than I do. So on a reaction, um, let's say it's got a 40 foot range. Okay. What's the range on healing word? Uh, those are all like 60, aren't they? 60 healing feet. Word is 60. All right, so, I'll give you that. Um, That's a good argument. Sure. Not, yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking like, Take it. I, I was thinking 30 feet, but I wanted to see what healing word was. Um, um, all right. Last I question. I created the items in yeah. my inventory in um, in D and D Beyond. Can I? I, if I want to give one of these, for instance, to one of their characters, can we do that in D and D Beyond? Um, yes and no. Um, we can just create it in our own inventory. But and you can't you pass just, between characters. Yeah, there, there's no real mechanic to say I want to give this to okay, another wait. player. You can move it between your backpack and your equipment. Sweet. But there's nothing to like say I want to give this to. Player X. Well, um, does anyone want the wand? Yeah, I'll take the wand. I'm more behind the line support. I mean, I would almost say because you already have a healing yeah. effect, right? You can you can change your. That's, that's, um, that is true. I do I do already have a healing effect by so, breaking out it. Another cannon. So maybe I uh, should take the healing wand, or the not. I mean, it's not a healing wand, but it's the it's the. Yeah. The, but you didn't do anything useful this battle. You didn't earn it. <laughs> That's part of the point. <laughs> I might be more effective this way, but I mean, your... I'll, I'll leave it. I'll leave it. I mean, because I could, <laughs> I could absolutely just poke out. Oh, looks like they need help. Bing. Yeah. Because <laughs> your thing is you're, you're trying to be use like non combat effects to well, have an effect on combat. The start of this campaign is that you know Trixie is a a stage uh, magician. As the campaign progresses, as we level up, being that we're getting into combat regularly, and she realizes, well, if I'm going to be doing this, I really need to be able to be effective in battle she's likely going to pick up spells that will actually okay. deal damage. But at the yeah. start, it was, what does she need to deal damage for? She's just okay. she's just going from town to town. Sure, yeah, you can have maybe something useful to just, like, prevent one of us from, like, getting injured. Right. Yeah. So. Because right. additionally, like, I think you're going to be more in, like, the thick of it than even I will be. Because at least right now, there's no way I'm getting anywhere near these things. I will get as close as I need to. Even my touch spells, like, if I need to, I can send my familiar in and do the touch spell with yep. my familiar. And I am, All right, go ahead. I am keeping the claw necklace of haste because it's got jungle animal claws, and I, I think I I feel in touch with it. Because it belonged to your swamp friend. My swamp friend. friend. Yeah. Swamp friends are good. All right. All right. Well, you guys make your way back to town. Um, I think that's probably where we'll call it a night for this one. Uh, one other quick question on the amulet. If a claw were to be removed from it and then given to somebody else, could they then crack it and have the effect be on them instead of the owner of the amulet? Yes. So the necklace okay. just has these five claws on it. So they can be taken off and then 
Everybody okay. gets a claw. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you get the, the the only reason the only reason I asked like it I I I think it's perfectly fine that the clique keeps it. Uh, it it it's definitely within character, but it almost would make more sense for the melee heavy characters, so Cleet and then um, Vericus, yeah, sure. to right. be able it to utilize those. for a right. melee, but, I mean, Cleet, Cleet like, seems to be like to melee with the Shillelagh, so... Right, right, no, exactly, exactly, exactly. It, it, it just, it, it, it's one of those things, it's like, it, it, it's cool, they can share that as necessary. Yeah, if, right. Uh, so, yeah. just, just having that option available is... It would be a blur. Is, yeah. Cool. Uh, okay well that's all i got um uh, well thanks for dming again good job guys you want to sign off for <laughs> uh the, the question we do i get the, to do that the it's question we always have to ask at the end of the episode is what's what's the title of the episode How to make swamp friends? Swamp friends. No, no. I Influence think. People. Uh, stop trying to make swamp <laughs> friends happen. Yeah, I think that's actually it. Yeah. I think that's gotta be it. <laughs> swamp friends don't let swamp friends use the word swamp friends. <laughs> that seems too long, but I like it. Okay. Uh, I'll call it something. I'll figure out something. But um, thanks. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Have a good evening. If anyone's still watching, like and subscribe, please.